Right, so this time I've got some more exciting news. I always have exciting news when you're building an e-bike because you keep buying new things. But anyway, here it is. Shiny new Sabaton. Difference between this one and that one is that this one actually works because I didn't blow it up. Um, also, it's got many more connectors on it. You've got a um, temperature sensor on the motor, which is important for me. Uh, you've also got the e-brake throttle, uh, which is really what I bought this for. Um, so I can adjust the regen, and then you've got all sorts of stuff like reverse, hall sensor output, you name it. Um, it also came with the Bluetooth module, which would be really handy. Um, and the other party trick I bought is this, the dashboard. I'll give you a little sneak peek. Um, that looks really cool. Um, again, made by QS Motor. Um, this is the company who distribute them, I, I don't know, like Psychosis, SIA, Ecosis, I don't know, they're a part of QS Motor. But yeah, I'll be doing a video on this in the future once I've kind of figured out how it works and connected it all up. But now it's time to go all through the process of mounting the Sabdon. As you can see, I've gutted the bike uh, with everything down here. So here we go again. So a recap of how the Sabaton and batteries go in. So this is the base and I've drilled four holes for these screws that stick out and then line up with slots on here. This then attaches to the bottom of the frame, uh, like here on these um, brass standoffs. And then these bits line up with these slots here to secure it on this end. And if we connect it on the app, that all looks fine. 75% charge, voltage, voltage, uh, voltage different 0.02, oh sorry, two millivolts. That's absolutely fine. Temperatures, all fine. Okay, so I've routed the power wires to the subtom. We've got the negative coming down there and the positive there. Um, I've tapped off the main positive. That goes through the key switch and then into the ignition wire to turn it on. Uh, this says ignition 72 volts, so this goes directly to whatever the battery voltage is, not 12 volts, not ground. Um, I've had this on my old bike, so I know that's correct. So what I'm going to do is power on the um, what's it thing. That BMS, there we go. Okay, nothing's gone bang. And now we're going to turn the key. There we go, a light. Now that's flashing, because there's no hall sensors plugged in. Oh, and by the way, I've made up this extension cable to extend the hall sensors down to the motor down there. I should have made it longer, but I didn't know that the company would dispatch it with one big reel, not cut it up into a metre strip, but anyway. So the next thing to do is connect it to the computer, get the motor running, get the hall sensors up and do the hall test. All right, so I've got the USB cable connected up. It's blinking, but it's not actually kind of active. You have to have the battery connected as well as the USB cable um, to access it. Um, and I've also got the software they sent up, which is the version 2.1, not the version 2 or version 1 anyway. It's the latest software. And ignition. Solid green light. Now it starts blinking. So let's communication. Oh yeah, the button work in reverse as well. Configure, and hopefully, there we go, 55.1 volts. And um, we should be getting an error. Yeah, hall fault. Um, I haven't connected the sensors. I have actually been testing them with my power supply, so I know they're all good. So now it's just time to do this and run the hall test. And it says test OK, and if you go into the settings, you can see it's 196, uh, the hall angle, which is exactly what it was on the old controller, so that's all good. So that's pretty much it. Um, that's all I've done on the bike. You can see it looks a little bit different because I've fitted the dashboard 
Uh, 3D printed up a uh, clamp for this side uh, with some rubber padding. Need to get another one done for the other side. Um, but here's some of the things I've been working on as uh, a preview of what's coming up. So this is a new thermistor for the back wheel because I ordered completely the wrong type. I ordered an NTC, not a PTC, if that means anything to you. Um, and also I ordered the wrong potentiometer. It needs to be a 200K because um, the Sabaton's quite fussy about the um, voltage that it gets from the motor for the temperature sensor. It's quite a fine balance. Also got a um, buck converter which will take the battery voltage down to 12 volts for all the um, stuff that runs with 12 volts uh, like these which are the relays for the headlights um, and indicators. So you've got high beam, low beam, left, right indicators. Um, I want to get started on the kind of 12 volt and the lighting system but I feel like I kind of, I need everything. I need the headlight, I need the tail light before I get started because I've got to make a big old wiring harness to go in there. I've started designing it but yeah, we'll see. Um, and then this is a new throttle which I'm uh, trying to get working. It's got some switches on it as well. Um, and also these brakes. Um, now these are two four pot brakes and these are actually sent in by a viewer. So um, Jeff, thanks thanks a lot really. Um, yeah, it's been a great help. Um, so yeah, these will give it some immense stopping power. I mean, four pot front and rear, Madura and uh, Shimano Z. So yeah, Jeff, you're awesome, thank you. <laughs> Um, and then finally, these are going to be some uh, torque arms for the rear. You can see that's the um, cutout for the axle. Um, I'll show you in a future video how these are actually going to work. But yeah, these will just stop the axle rotating because it doesn't quite pinch it enough at the back. So I need something extra just to give it a bit of extra support. Um, I've taken it out for a few more test rides, only at 4 kilowatts. And uh, yeah, it's got some decent performance. Um, but yeah, that's me it for this one guys, see you next time.